Hexagonal architecture, also known as ports and adapters, has a clear development sequence. Following that sequence allow you the space to learn, to take better decisions, and also to progress faster. The development sequence is quite simple. This is how we do it. It's not the goal of this video to go deep on testing practices or project structures. We have here a solution with two projects, the core that will be the home of our Hexicon and also a project for testing. To put in practice the development sequence that by the way you can follow the steps on the left hand corner of this video, we will use a simple service to get tasks from a to-do application from somewhere to the outside through an API let's say. Let's write our first test. We can start with the approach of first defining our assertions. On my case, I imagine that I will receive a list here and then I will check that I have, for example, two entries. Where does that list come from? Let's say it comes from a to-do service from a method get a sync. That means we need this to the service and we set up this test with that to the service. At the moment, I don't have this class and this method, so let's create them. Let me move the class to the proper project. I have a failing test. Why? Because I'm throwing an exception when I'm calling that method, so let's first do that. To do that, I need my class that will represent a to-do. Let's work with something as simple as this, and we change our service to return a to-do right here. Now to complete our first stage, we need to return data from here to make our test pass. On the first step of the sequence, what you do is that you hard code your hexagon. So you can do something as simple as this, where you return hard coded data, like you can see right here, and I'm just returning them for the sake of making this test pass. Now we complete our first step of the sequence. And it's important to notice some important things. We now have our first user and adapter on the system, that is our tests, but also we have defined our inbound port of our hexagon right here, okay? The definition of this method of the to-do service. Now we can move to the step two. On the step two of this process, what we'll be doing is moving this art code of data into an adapter. And now can we do that? I will create a new project. I will rename the class to to-do in memory storage expose the get async method and copy that art coded thing into here. I will extract an interface from this in memory store, I to do storage and move that interface into my hexagon. Now we can refactor our to do service to have in consideration that interface. I will get it through dependency injection. And now on this case is as simple as calling that to do storage and return. Now we need a small refactoring on this to do service because we need that interface. I will simply call my to do in memory storage here and run the test again. We are in a green state and we reach the end of our stage two. By the end of stage two, you have your hexagon ready. You define your input and output boundaries. What does that mean? It means that you have your ports. So everything that is inside of your hexagon has already been tested and developed at this time. Now it's time to focus on the adapters that will connect to your hexagon. A benefit of going through this approach is that once you have your hexagon ready and you will go focus on your adapters, it means that you have discovered a lot of things about your problem. So now you can have a more informed decision on the implementation that you need to have on your adapters. The next step on the process is defining our left side adapter. You may know it as primary adapter or driving adapter. Is that one that you'll be doing. So in our case, we'll be using a web project. I will start going faster on this process. Normally I would implement tests on top of these endpoints that I will be implementing, but since it's not part of the development sequence on hexagonal architecture, I will not touch that on this video. I will expose an endpoint that we'll call it to those that to those will have access to my I to do storage. And from there I will call the method and make sure it's already registered on the dependency injection. And if I call that endpoint, I have the response right here. Now we have our left side adapter ready. What does that mean? It means that you can start interacting with the application. You can start playing around even with that static data. You can do your first demos. And once you are ready, you can go to the next step of the sequence that is implementing your right side adapter, driven or secondary adapter. And now can we do that? We already have our port for the right side defined Remember that we moved the static data into an in-memory implementation of that adapter. 
What we need to do now is to convert this thing into the real thing that we are looking for. Let's imagine that on this case our database is the file system. I would create a class to do file system storage and that class implements the i to do storage interface and we implement I will get that JSON file, read the content and then the serialize into to do's and just return it. Go back into your driving adapter or into your configuration route and redefine your dependency injection configuration to inject the new adapter. Let's go into our file, add one extra entry so you can see things changing. Now we have three tasks, as you can see. Let's run this thing, let's reload our page, and our new task will pop out right here. By the way, you can grab the source code as a patron. This is a basic implementation following the development sequence of hexagonal architecture. Even if you have more ports, more adapters, you can follow the process that you have learned on this video. But now I would like to know more from you. Do you use Exactly Architecture? Do you follow this development sequence? Let me know on the comments. And if you want to dig deeper into Exactly Architecture, make sure you watch this video right here, where I explain you how you can apply it in C Sharp. If you like this video, I would love if you could share it with your friends and your team. I will see you soon, and in the meanwhile, keep it simple.